<laughs> Hi viewers, the main team here. Welcome back to Let's Play Civ 4 Multiplayer with Mao. And, uh, as I alluded to in the previous video, uh, we're wrapping up here. I think we have one more after this now, so we're almost done. And I'll get to your questions in a moment, but, uh, just, uh, to lead off for today, I'll say that most of my cities back home are now just looping rifles and cannons. Uh, sometime, I would actually say, like, one or two videos ago, I realized that once I got to rifling and cannons, I pretty much had everything I needed to win the game. So I didn't really care about tech after that point. And I still research things just because it gives me points, and you know, even though that really doesn't mean anything, we use it for our uh, basis of the quote unquote winner or whatever. And so, I, I like playing for points, even though, to be fair, it really, <laughs> who finishes with a high score depends on a lot more than just how well someone plays, unfortunately. But, as I said before, I can't come up with a better measure myself, so. Uh, we still use that. Anyway, I'll move on to the questions now. First is by uh, Brentonio1996, asking me, do I like playing with random <laughs> events? <laughs> yeah, um, back in the Civ 4 Let's Play, my very first one, my very first video, I did say something about gay events, and I credit Death Turnip by uh, remembering that. So yeah, I'm not a fan of events. They're... Uh, they're fake difficulty, as far as I'm concerned. If you don't know what fake difficulty is, look it up on TV Tropes. They fail multiple aspects of fake difficulty, as the site defines it. So, that that pretty much sums up why I hate them. They're not reasonably determined by player actions. They're really nothing you can do to elicit good ones or bad ones. I mean, you can to an extent, but it's still so beyond the player control that you can literally have outcomes that are not dependent on player action. Then those are both outcomes at, you know, a turn-to-turn -turn level, just like you get the event or you don't completely randomly, as the name implies, or you, uh, you win or lose the game, literally, on some events, like the Bermuda Triangle event or the Vedic Aryan Archer Uprising at, like, 3000 BC event, or, you know, those huge Diplo events, either positive or negative can easily impact the outcome of a game if you're playing for diplomacy, for example. So, no, I hate random events. I Also, I don't think they really add anything to gameplay. Like, for a game that, for the most part, rewards player actions based on what the player does, they're really a sore spot in this game. I don't know, they, they just bother me entirely. And it bothers me even more to see them on forum games when you're actually comparing individuals like playing the same map that that makes it even stupider but even in multiplayer games when you know that if you're playing against people of equal skill and the margins are so narrow to have the game decided on event e even though it's not that common you know for the times it does happen it just seems unforgivable to me like why would you leave that on so no i i don't like events <laughs> and hopefully that rant isn't too much for stop stop as he uh, commented against me doing that but Eh, I kept it mostly family friendly here, so there you go. Uh, next question is by uh, Fox Lily Brower, and he wants to me to focus on what I'm building, why and when I build them, especially when I build them. And I'd like to do that, and I do that in my other Civ Let's Plays. But for this one, it's it's a little bit impossible just because I'm running this at two times speed, so it's palatable. Because otherwise, man, this would be a slow let's play. So yeah, I'm running this two times speed. Um, another problem is that I'm doing this post commentary, so I don't remember all the minute details that I use to select everything in the city. And especially at this point in the game, a lot of what I'm doing, I'm just doing quickly to save time. So um, wait for my next one and I'll explain what I'm doing more in my cities again, and if you guys want, I'll, I'll try to keep focus on that in particular, because uh, I, I have seen some questions along those lines in the past as well. And yeah, video quality is bad when it first uploads, so yeah, don't tell me that. Just wait until you can get it in 720p, and then it should be pretty nice. Okay, next one is by Cholami. Thanks for all the vids. They've been really informative. One of one question though: In future multiplayer video, would you consider doing human versus human versus AI world domination? 
this it, amongst the few uh, multiplayer games I've played where we were doing human versus human, and this particular group with a polycast co-hosts and uh, former guest co-hosts or new guest co-hosts, whatever. It, I, I've only done like one or two PVPs, and there's a number of issues with uh, PVPs, especially when you involve AI. Like, really, there's not much incentive to deal with the AI. You're going to want to go straight from the humans. And the last one I did was a uh, 3 versus 3 versus 3 versus 3. And there was some bad blood over that. Because at the start of the game, they were like, somebody suggested that we take on the AIs first. And my argument was, we're doing islands, and that's ridiculous. Well, not islands, it was like four major continents. And I contended that that was ridiculous because, you know, somebody's going to come out ahead doing that. And the other person's just going to be banned from attacking them. It's like one of those stupid no rush for 20 minutes StarCraft games or something. So I didn't agree to that. But then when we burned like pretty much more than half of their coastal cities in within exactly one turn, like literally, like we came in with Viking ships and just hit every single coastal city on half, like half of their continent and burned the cities down the second we took them. They're like, I thought we were going to attack the AI first. And like, where in the text did everyone agree to that? No, we didn't. So, <laughs> there, there was a little bit of bad blood there. I, I think one or two of the players who were targets of that still remembers that. But anyway, uh, my point is that it, it's so luck dependent based on your start, based on you know, who you spawn near, and who gets to, again, if there are AIs that are nearby, they're easy to crush for one player or not another. That's just another thing that could decide the outcome. And, I don't know, I, I would be willing to do it, but I don't think many of the others would, and it wouldn't be as fun for me. Because I don't really like games where it's more luck that affects the outcome rather than what the players do. Now, granted, I know like I can't win every time, nobody can win every time, but it, it should still be based on the quality of play that came from myself and from my opposition, not from the random number generator in the game, which hates all of us, I assure you. It doesn't just hate me, it hates everybody. <laughs> So, uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing a YouTube video of that, because, you know, having it posted on the interwebs for all to see, I, I can just see the pressure causing even more arguments over the settings, luck factor, and all that. Especially after we pulled that mass raising thing the last time. I, 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 can, just, I can just imagine what could go wrong in such a game, so... I think I'll still clear that viewers. I don't know, maybe I'll do a game spy something something one day or whatever. And yeah, you know, then maybe it'll be a little more reasonable, but not with this group. Not with this group. Next question is by Ganon one six seven. Do you have any tips about corporations? I never liked them or gained much from them, but do you ever use them? And my answer is usually not because it takes lots of extra micro effort to set them up and it usually makes the game go on a little longer. But I'll say this. The major Hall of Fame space race games on Deity usually involve them heavily, so they have merit. Also, anyone playing for a high score would do well to milk their city populations to the max using Sid's Sushi. Yeah, in the Game of the Month series, there's even a cow icon for the person who milks up their base score the highest. Kind of cute. So they're good for that. Also, even though they have higher setup costs, the end city outputs that you get from them are better than you can get with any alternative thing like state property or whatever. So if you do get like a 20 hammer mining anchor, there's no way state property can keep up with that. So they have their place. I don't use them a lot, but I do use them sometimes. And usually it's just based on an evaluation of how many resources I have. And, oh yeah, I took a vassal there. Based on how many resources I have and how much longer I think the game is going to last, if they'll pay back their setup costs. But overall, I don't use them very frequently. Some people do them more. Uh, next is by uh, Magic the Gathering for Life again, or MTG for Life, just in case that stands for something else. And he wants to know if I can bring other forum members onto my videos to comment. And there's some technical problems with doing that. But I'll, you know, I would love to see other high-level players make YouTube videos. I, I would not mind competition at all. In fact, I would like to see it. But it doesn't seem like it's happening. It's hard for people to keep the pace here. And I can get some comments based on uh, you know what people see here. But for the most part, 
that would be on the forum rather than on uh, video format because they would have to watch the video and carefully analyze everything I do and then post comment it after I send them the video or send me the audio clip or something. It would just be a mess, so I don't foresee that happening, unfortunately. Uh, Tormac Saber, and this is the final question I can cover for today, wants to know, uh, he noticed in my my statue city that each water tile is two hammers instead of one. And uh, that's from a golden age. That's all that was. I know I didn't really explain why, but at this point, a golden age is absolutely going to give me more returns than anything else, just because it gives me more units. So I just clicked golden age in the last video, and that's the result. So that'll take care of it today. I'll try to do a slower segment. I only have uh, one clip left and cover some of the questions I missed in the next one. Me and team, signing off.